everyone. Sandy LaFleur here, Just Fine Designs. And today, I hope you're going to join me to paint this Carrots for Sale plaque. So let's get started painting our design. When you order your surface, this is what you should receive. A banner cutout with a border line already etched on for you. And also some uh, carrot cutouts that you'll be gluing on at the end. So those are what you should start with. We're going to set the carrots aside and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to give our surface a coat of bleach sand. Now I'm perfectly aware that y'all can base coat without watching me. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Base coat with bleach sand. I'm going to sand it lightly once it's dry and then I'm going to tape off this outside border so that we can do the next step. Okay, I'm back and I got that one coat of bleach sand on there. Doesn't have to be opaque because there's so much stuff that goes on top of it. And I have my border taped off. Now something I like to do when I can remember to do it is to seal that edge of the tape so that um, the blue color that we're going to put in the center doesn't bleed off into the edges. So I'm just going to stick my finger in the puddle of bleach sand and just rub um, some bleach sand along the edge. doesn't take a lot. Um, didn't need as much as I put on right there, but oh well. But I'm just going to run and seal that edge of that tape so that the blue doesn't bleed under there. All right, almost there. So you get to do a little finger painting too. And then we'll need to dry that, of course. And if you need to wash your finger off, you can. So I'm just going to get out my handy dandy craft heat it gun and dry that little bit of an edge that I put on there right now. All right, so now I'm going to take a large brush. This is a three quarter inch. You could use a larger brush if you'd like. And I'm going to um, thin down a little bit of Provence Sky. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm not Italian, right? Um, so I'm going to thin it down. It's a heavy wash. So more like a, a regular wash is 80% water and 20% paint. This one you probably want to flip it and do, you know, 80% paint and 20% water. Um, if you get it too thin, it's no big deal. You can just give it another coat. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip slap this color, this thin down Provence sky, onto this center area here. And if I see brush strokes, that's great. That's what I want. Um, I don't want the background to just be solid blue. I want you to see some hints of that bleach sand through the back, the lighter color. So just continue to slip slap, go all different directions. We're just kind of building up some interest here and now uh, some of it will get covered up and that's okay. We know it's there and so we know that the background is going to be really interesting even if nobody else sees it or cares, right? So almost there. I need to pick up a little bit more water because I ran out of thin down paint. All right. So again, we need to let this dry. And then what we're going to do is we are going to apply the pattern. You can go ahead and put the pattern on for the bunny and for the um, the little the centers of the little white flowers. So I will be back after I've dragged this and put the pattern on. All right. So I've um, I removed my tape. And you can see what a nice clean edge that has now because you did that little thing with your finger paint. 
and I put the pattern on for just the rabbit and the um, flowers. I think there's four of them. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Just the centers, just the round centers. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of punchinello and um, I use this as a stencil material and I'm going to take some warm white and I'm going to just stencil some random clusters of dots on the background around the rabbit. I wouldn't do too terrible much down in this area since it's going to get covered up by your carrots anyway, but just some nice soft clusters of dots and I say soft and I think that's qualifies um, you don't have to make the whole cover the whole background we just want to again add a little bit more interest to this background and so I'm gonna go like in between his ears and let's go over here just add some soft um, soft areas of warm white dots. This got a little too soft over here, so I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. And then what you wanna do is just to add even a little bit more interest to the background, go ahead and pick up some, some Provence Sky and some warm white, just to get a lighter blue of that background blue and go ahead and add just a couple of areas, a couple, more like three at least, areas of light blue dots around. And these don't have to go as far, as many places as the white did, unless you just want them to. Like I think I might want some up here. So there you go. So just some nice, soft stenciling of those random dots that you use your punchinello. If you don't have punchinello, um, use a stencil that you have in your stash that's not too, um, it's not gonna overtake the background. You just wanna add a little bit of interest to the background. And then we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some sapphire and I want to float shading around this outside edge and I'm going to float shading around the bunny itself with a, a nice soft float of sapphire. Get it in here and get mine. I'm down to the end of this bottle. Luckily I bought some more the other day. You want to blend it out well because it can um, take over if you don't. Nice and soft sapphire blue. So I'm blending it out quite a bit and I'm gonna start down here just so I can get a feel for how soft I have it and if I need to make it softer or I need to make it darker and I think that's gonna be pretty good and I chose down here because this is where those carrots are gonna cover that up so um, if it was wrong I could hide it right and I think that's gonna be pretty good and if you're um, a mop brush user, this would be a good time to get out your mop brush and soften your floats if you need to. We're just gonna go all the way around the inside of this center blue area with this nice soft float of sapphire blue. doesn't take too long to do and even if it did it's part of the process so you know yet you, you just got to do it because I did it so now you have to do it of course I won't know if you don't unless you tell me okay and now what I want to do is I want to go around just the rabbit, I'm not going around the flowers. And it doesn't matter if I don't get the shape exactly right because I'm going to base coat the rabbit in and fix it, right? So this is one of the advantages to doing this background shading before you base in anything. And a little bit more.
and this just pops is going to pop the bunny off the background a little bit So now what we want to do is we want to add some little tints of color just to um, spring this up a little bit. So uh, what I want you to get, do is get out some Irish moss, just a little bit, and a little bit of purple cow. And let's see, where's my purple cow? There's my purple cow. And I'm just going to make a, a wash, a real light wash of these colors, not together. You know, a light wash of purple cow. And I want to just um, tint the background a little bit here and there, just to add some more spring to it. And this isn't something you're going to, you know, notice a whole lot, unless you get a little too heavy like I just did there. So we'll just come back with some water on it and tone it down a little bit. Yeah. And that's why God gave you fingers. So you can blend those edges. And then I want to do the same thing with some Irish moss. And if you wanted, to, you could pull in the yellow or um, the pink. It's completely up to you. I just decided to do it with uh, the green. Now the green's a little brighter, so you do want to make sure you you uh, blend that wash down a little bit. But I think it really adds to the uh, interest. You know, that's my word, interest of this piece. It just kind of makes it look a little more springy. And again, I'm not worrying about down here because it's going to get covered up. I always like to look at what I'm painting and decide what what's going on top of what so I know how much time I need to spend on that. So let's go to our bunny. He needs to be based in with fawn. So let's get out a little bit of fawn. And let's base our bunny in with fawn. One coat will do. There's a lot on top of him. So let's... One coat will do if you don't add water to your paint. I should clarify that. And this is where you can fix the shape if you screwed it up with your um, load of blue. All right. Okay, now the ears. Nice big old ears. forward through this. All right, so we have a bunny painted with ears. We're going to let that dry and apply the basic pattern uh, for his face, his nose, his eyes, his mouth, and the inside of his ears. So I'll be back once I get that done. All right, the first order of business that we have here is we want to paint in his eyes with lamp black, and they're just nice little ovals. 
I'm going to use a liner brush to paint them in. But just straight lamp black, fill in those ovals. And then we're going to paint the uh, nose. We want to paint the nose and the inside of the ears with vintage pink. Nice big pink nose on our bunny. And let's paint those ears in. I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush to paint those in because they're a little bit bigger. It's a round. Seems to work really well. Okay, one more ear inner. We'll have him looking like a little rabbit in no time. Okay. He has some cheeks. Every rabbit has cheeks, right? And we are going to dry brush those on with some vintage pink also. So get out your favorite little brush to dry brush with and pick up some vintage pink. And let's give them a couple little cheeks and they kind of just sit on either side of the nose. And we're gonna put fur on top of this, yes, but they might peek through, you never know. And maybe you have one of those rare brands of bunnies that has no fur, you know? It could happen, just saying. We are going to float some shading on the ears, around the nose, under the nose, on his mouth, and on his chin with burnt umber. So get out just a little bit of burnt umber. You'd think I'd be able to find that really easy in my stash. There it is. Don't need a lot. But we are going to float some shading on our bunny. And it's gonna go on his ears and uh, next to his head and you can go all the way across. It can go into the pink part. It's all right. So I'm going to just go all the way across the bottom of his ears next to his head. This is just underwear for when we get ready to put the fur on. And I want to go I'm going to go in on his little mouth. I'm going to do like a little back to back float right there for his mouth. And I am going to soften that a little bit with my mop brush. I want to go along the bottom of his chin with this float.
and then his ears I want to kind of come down the sides a little bit so I'm going to start about two-thirds of the way up and come down the side and I'm going to do that on both sides of the ear so let one side kind of dry a little bit come down the other side All right. And let's see, what is our next step? We're going to line a shadow. And if you've painted with me, you know what's coming. I'm going to take my liner brush. I'm going to thin down some burnt umber. And I want to line a shadow above each eye. So, no. I forgot to go around his nose. Let me make sure I did that. Yes, I did. So I'm going to line a shadow above his eyes, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to float shading around his nose. So just around the top half of his eye, I'm going to do this shadow of burnt umber. And that just helps to set his eyes back into his head. It, you don't want his eyes floating on top of his fur. So now I'll come back with my flat and I'm going to float that shading around his nose. Okay. And I'm going to start down there by his mouth where I already have a, a kind of a brown starting place. Just going all the way around his nose. And that's going to pop his nose off his face a little bit too. Alright. Mop brush. Soften. There we go. We're going to float some highlighting on his ears and inside his ears and across the top of the nose with warm white. So a nice soft float of warm white too. I'm going to go across this top of the brown part of his ears And then I'm also going to just drop down and go in the top of the inside of his ears. And I'm also going to go across the top of his nose with this warm white. And then we'll go in and get the other ear. All right. Moving right along. He's starting to come to life. We also want to go across the top of his head with this warm white float. So I'm going to start down the side a little ways, come across the top of his head. And again, keep in mind this is just underwear. We're going to dry brush some warm white highlighting inside his ears and inside his nose and a little just a teeny tiny smidge inside the eyes so warm white dry brush and let's go inside his nose i'm going to go inside starting in the top of his ears and just kind of dry brush down a ways And now that my dry brush is kind of 
almost empty with warm white, I'm going to just come in and scrub just a little warm white in the top of each eye. And we are going to get out some cranberry wine. It's a nice color. I really like it. And we're going to float some shading inside the ears and in the bottom of the nose with cranberry wine. Now I know we have that uh, burnt umber there, but that's fine. We're going to go right over it with our cranberry wine. I'm going to start about halfway up the side here. And then I'm going to come down and around and back up. Just to put some red color into his ears. Or pink, anyway. And then I want to do the bottom of his nose. And let's soften that a little bit. Alright, now his eyes, you can make them any color you want. Um, I chose to make them a purple cow. So I am going to, um, I threw away my palette, so I have to get another little dot of purple cow. And all I'm going to do is I am going to float a little sea stroke of purple cow inside the bottom of each eye. And it's not going to go all the way in the bottom. It's going to sit above the bottom a little bit. Leave that little rim of lamp black there. Okay, so while we let that dry, let's line some eyelashes on him. Those are lamp black. So with a tiny liner, this one is a six aught, I believe. And I'm just going to thin down some lamp black. And I'm just going to give my guy some little eyelashes. I'm just going to squiggle them on there. If you want to line them individually, that's fine. It's your bunny. You can do what you want. But I just gave him a few little eyelashes. Now I'm going to come back with my flat brush. And I'm going to do a sea stroke of lamp black in those eyes. So a tiny corner load of lamp black. And I'm going to float that right above that purple so that I kind of clean it up and make it look like I painted a crescent shaped stroke in the bottom of those eyes. If you wanted to start out by just painting a crescent shaped stroke, that would be great. This is just quicker and easier. All right? Cool. And we are going to line a little bit of a highlight on what's left of that purple stroke with warm white plus a touch of purple cow. Just a little bit lighter value than that base color of purple cow. So I'm just going to take my liner brush and line a little bit of a highlight in the bottom of that stroke. And then I'm going to take straight warm white and I'm going to add some highlights in the black part of the eye. Just a couple little set downs. And I also like to do some that straddle the um, purple and the black. 
guess I could have did that one over there, but it'll be okay. You get the idea, right? And now with some thinned burnt umber, you want to line his mouth. So just some nice thin burnt, burnt umber. Just line his little mouth. All right. So now we are going to add some fur to our bunny. What you're going to need is you're going to need your quarter inch filbert rake or comb brush. Okay, so we're going to start adding fur, and we're going to use our filbert comb, filbert rake brush. And so a, a comb or a rake is like having a whole bunch of little uh, liner brushes. And so we are going to thin down some burnt umber with our um, filbert comb. And just like with a liner brush, you want to stay as straight up and down on your piece and um, on the tips. So I'm going to start by stroking on this darker fur. And I'm going to, it's, it's not going to look real good at first. But just like everything else, this is the underwear. And I'm going to start pulling this fur off the edge, of the hard edge of the base painted part of the bunny. So I'm going to get hair into the center and off, off into the um, outside edge of this bunny. Just to soften that hard edge. So... Like I said, this is the underwear, so it's not going to look real good yet, but it gives you an opportunity to get used to your rake brush and how much pressure and what angle, if you're going at it at an angle. It just gives you a, a chance to figure it out how you need to uh, hold this brush and apply this paint. And he's going to look kind of, I don't know, um, like he's got a 5 o'clock shadow all over his face. So I'm going to start stroking here on his head here. And again, I'm going to go off that hard edge just to kind of blur that a little bit. And I am going to go over his little cheeks that we put on there. It's just the way it goes. But you see, you can still see cheeks, right? And he, his little jowls are going to... The hair is going to start running a little bit different way there. So look, he kind of looks like he hasn't shaved in a few days. And this will be more defined um, when we start putting on the other layers. I don't know why, but he kind of reminds me of the wolf man right now. So we want this to dry before we go on with our next layer. So if you have a dryer or a heat gun, you want to dry this a little bit. Because if you went on it while it was still wet, you would just get mush. And we don't want mush. We want bunny fur. So the next layer or two is going to be with thinned warm white. So thin down your paint, liner consistency. And again, I'm going to start on his ears. And I'm just going to pull some short little fur. 
on his ears. Getting into the inside of the ear a little bit and going off the edge so that I blur that hard line. And we'll do another coat so that we blur that line even more and so that we can make the fur just a little bit more um, bright and um, I don't know the word I'm looking for but anyway we'll do it again just to reinforce it because you can see what I've done already has when it dried it toned down a whole lot Think like fur. Or like like think like my hair. It goes where it wants to. Doesn't always go where I want it to. And that's what this rabbit is having problems with too. And then again on his face. The white on he doesn't look so much like the wolf man. Again, I'm going to go right over his cheeks, but I can still see him. And if you can get your brush in between his eyes, that'd be good. You just turn it sideways and kind of pull it up that way. And a little bit above his nose would be great. I'm gonna pull on his chin first. Got a little uh, long haired there. And if you want your bunny to have short, uh, shorter hair, you can do shorter strokes. That's all there is to it. All right. And then here, it's just going to. It is definitely going to be shorter here, here. All right, so I'm going to add another layer of white because he's still too brown for me. And I'm just going to be a little bit more deliberate about where I stroke this fur. Now he's looking more like a bunny. Right? More like a nice fuzzy white Easter bunny. Okay, so just keep adding that fur. It's kind of like when you do a, a beard on Santa. There comes a point in time where you need to stop. And if you don't, that's usually the issue.
So there we go. Now he's looking more Easter bunny, Easter bunny -y, because that's a word, right? Kind of fuzzy. In fact, he's very fuzzy. Again, I want to get in between his eyes a little bit and a little bit above his nose. It's really easy after a while, right? After a while, your fingers just know, your hand just knows how to, how you want to hold this brush and how you want to stroke. And I can still see pink cheeks. Okay, I want to lighten up the top here a little bit. Alright, I'm going to quit before I ruin this. Okay, so I'm going to take my tiniest liner, which is that 6 sock, and some thinned warm white, and I'm just going to go through and add some little uh, strokes, some more definite little hairs. I'm going to do that on his ears especially on the top of his head, maybe a few next to his eyes. And I'm going to do it on his, um, I'm pointing to it on my face, on his um, jowls underneath his nose. So we're going to do that with warm white and our little liner brush. So thin down your warm white just a little bit. And let's just add some of this will be good covered up with um, lettering, but it'll be okay. Just here and there, reinforce the fur a little bit with some thicker um, strokes. Don't get too carried away. Flick them on there. Okay. And I want to do the top of his head. It's got to have some more definite little uh, curly fur there, right? And especially between his eyes kind of acts like his little eyebrows a little bit and I'll do a few here and there on his cheeks don't make it a career right and then we're gonna do some on his little um, muzzle that's what it's called, a muzzle. I was looking for that word. If you want to do some on his chin, you can. But you don't have to. I think I'll go a little bit further out here. Yeah. Alright. So now he looks like a little... Um, a little bunny and then he has some little whiskers and we are going to line those with burnt umber 
So there are whisker lines and whisker dots. So let me show you here. You can see them, some little uh, wavy whiskers and some little dots. So just nice thin whiskers that are gonna get covered up, obviously. Because otherwise, why would I put them on there if they weren't gonna get covered up? So when it just come back and just add a couple or a few little dots on his whiskers to make his whiskers. Okay. So there, quick and easy bunny. The flowers. Let's go ahead and paint our flowers. We're going to need a liner brush this one is a two and make sure you can see where your centers are and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some white paint or no water on my uh, liner brush and I'm going to flatten the tip so it's kind of square it's not a point it's a square and I'm just going to stroke some petals and they need to be a little bit wider than that. All the way around that center. Okay. And if they don't come out square, it's all right. They can be little flower petal shaped petals. That's fine. But just, and there's no right or wrong number of them. Just however many you get on there. I guess I could be on camera. That would be really helpful, wouldn't it? So if you wanted to make these uh, petals longer, you could. I'm doing a couple strokes on mine just because I'm not getting my brush flattened quite enough. All right, one flower done. So I'm gonna go and do the other ones. Now, this um, bottom one, this one that's underneath the carriage, you don't have to worry about it too, too much. I would just stroke um, like half of the flower petals on. Maybe that's enough. Maybe a couple more. Just a couple more. Yeah, I think that will do. And then we have um, two more flowers. And I'm going to make the lower flower be the one on top. So the upper flower, I'm going to stroke it on first. My petals are looking pretty sad. But you know what? They're not the focal point, so it really is okay. When you get over to the side, you can just do shorter petals. Because they don't go off into the side edge. It's a little bit longer. And just a couple more petals. And we'll be good. And I should make those go down to the center a little bit more. There we go. And so then this one is on top. This lower one is on top. So I'm going to just stroke those petals all the way around and go right over the petals of the flower that's higher up. Okay. 
Okay. All right. My flowers are a little wonky, but it'll be okay. That gives you permission to have wonky flowers. So then what I want to do is I want to tap in the centers with moon yellow. Which is a color we haven't had out yet. And I'm going to take my larger liner brush, my, uh, I mean my larger round brush. I think this is a four round. And I'm just going to tap in the round centers with moon yellow all right one done this one you can probably get away with tapping in half of the circle. I'll go ahead and do it all just to be safe. And let's do two more. It helps the yellow helps to make it look springy too. And we're going to uh, let me get one more in here. We're going to tap some highlighting in the tops of these centers with warm white. And it doesn't matter if there's like um, texture in this. It's okay. The centers need to have a little texture. I'm just going to wipe my brush out a little bit and pick up some warm white and come in and just tap a little bit of highlighting in the top of each of those centers. Can texture it good. I'm going to wipe the brush out a little bit. Pick up a little moon yellow on it. And then I'm going to pick up a little burnt umber. And I'm going to tap some shading in the bottom of these flowers. So just a little bit of burnt umber in the bottom of those flowers. Flower centers. Just to add, uh, what's the word? Interest. All right. Now our um, the border on this, which I managed to get paint on up here, is um, it's remained the bleach sand. So I'm going to take that little piece of drywall joint tape that I have and I am going to stencil the border with some purple cow. Alright, so where's my stencil brush? And they don't have, the dots don't have to line up. They don't have to be perfect. You can try to line them up if you want but they don't have to. I'm giving you permission to not have everything be straight, okay? And it doesn't have to all be the same um, opaqueness. You know, you can have some lighter areas. So just keep It off the purple center and you'll be good but that just adds some more 
spring to the piece. I should finish sentences, right? But just a quick and easy little add to that border. We are going to come and dry brush a little bit of highlighting on the border. Because you know I can't leave anything alone. That just wouldn't be right. Wouldn't be me. Alright. Last little edge. done with um, the plaque part of our piece so what I want to do is I want to dry brush some highlighting through the center of this border with warm white and I'm gonna need a little bit more of that and it's not a whole lot you do notice it because it's lighter than the background but just scrub a little bit of warm white through the center of each side of that border. Uh, thankfully, I didn't make it an octagon. So you don't have eight sides to do. We're going to float a little bit of shading on the border next to the blue with lavender. Get out a little bit of lavender and again you want to blend this out so that it's not so harsh. A nice soft float of lavender. just make it look pretty? I think it does. And apparently I'm the only one that counts, really. Right? And that makes that uh, lavender, um, that purple cow in the background there, pop a little bit more. doesn't take much to make a border a little more interesting than just a white uh, border. One last thing to do to that border and we're going to need a little bit of Irish moss and we're just going to line a very thin stripe between the blue and the uh, what's now purple border. So I'm going to use my tiniest liner brush and some thinned Irish moss and I'm just going to line in between the blue and the purple border. And this is another one of those things, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. If you wanted to, you could use a, a white paint pen and just add a white stripe between the border. It's your piece. 
you do with it as you please. I just offer suggestions. And I suggest you add some green. Just to finish that border off. Alright. Doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. unless you want it to be. All right, so I'm going to set this piece aside. Well, actually, no, I am not. I am going to put my lettering on. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this thing here and then get out a piece of tape just to tape this down. I just want to make sure it's kind of straight. Now this is a kind of a delicate stencil, so you want to be very careful when you uh, stencil it on. Now I did it with um, lamp black, so uh, if you want to choose a different color, I'm, I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt umber with mine, just to make it not quite as harsh. And I always kind of like to wipe my stencil brush off on my towel just to make sure that it doesn't have blobs. And I'm just going to add my lettering. Quick and easy. Arts. It's just nice. You don't have to use, um, it can be a light touch. It doesn't have to be um, a real um, heavy pressure. Okay, so I'm going to pull that off. There we go. Now, I always do this when I stencil lettering. You don't have to. Some people don't mind the look of stenciled letters, but I kind of do. So I'm going to get into that mix, that black and brown mix that I had, and I'm going to just fill in these little bridge areas. And that way it will look like I painted the letters instead of stenciled them. And this again is something that's completely up to you. I'm going to get a little bit more paint on my brush. But I just like to have it look um, less like a stencil and more like you actually painted it. So let me mix up a little bit more of that black and brown. I'm running low. So just fill up those little bridges if you want it to look like you want people to think you lettered it yourself. You're going to be really good at filling up the bridges on ours. Because goodness knows we have enough of them. Okay. 
Okay. Slowly but surely, we're getting this done. Hopefully not too slow. Just a few more letters to do. And the good old R again. Right. Now you remember I told you that this stencil was a little bit delicate. And where you're going to find that is in this R area. So what I want to do is I want to come back with some of that Provence Sky. Just a touch and my liner brush and I'm going to define that R a little bit better because that kind of got filled in when I stenciled. I can also fix this little inside. So stencils are great but sometimes they're a little bit of work. All right, so there, that looks better. So we are going to line some highlighting on our letters. I'm going to use my larger round brush. I'm going to do that with um, Irish moss. No water in my brush. I want it to be kind of dry. So I'm just going to go through and line some green, I'm going to call it highlighting, in the top half of each letter. The letters that aren't curvy are much easier. This just kind of brightens up the letters a little bit, otherwise they're just black blobs on there. Just kind of keep it dry brushy. too much paint to suit me on that one. So just dabbed it off. Okay. Getting really good at those R's. So that just kind of made the letters not be so stark and it tied them in with the piece because it, it pulls to this green tinting that you did on the background. Now I do do one more thing to the letters and um, this is a completely only if you want to. It's something that I do to all, almost all my lettering. It's very rare 
that um, I will do lettering without lining the shadow to the top and left of each letter on the background. And it's just something that helps to pop the lettering off the background a little bit more. So I'm going to take my liner brush, not my teeny tiniest, this one's a two, and some thinned sapphire. And I'm just going to line a shadow on the background next to each letter with this thinned sapphire. So it's to the top and left. So if there's a top on a letter and a left side, that's where you want to put this shadow. And it really doesn't take all that long. Especially since you can um, get off onto the black part of your letter. It won't matter. It won't show up. So like the O has a left side on the outside. It has a left side on the inside. So just a quick and easy little touch that will make the letter stand out just a little bit more. And if you, like I said before, if you don't want to do this, that's fine. It's one of the last things um, that you can do. And yes, even blue goes on the little bunny. done with the black part now we we'll just have to do the little carrots and those don't take any time at all so there you go nice lettering quick and easy and it looks like you did it yourself without a stencil so the carrots we want to paint you want to first of all you want to make sure you know which side you're doing so the three you have the three that are going to be on the left side you're going to paint the carrot part with spiced pumpkin and again it doesn't have to be opaque let me find my brush back and I'm just going to use my flat brush I am going to avoid the um, where the green tops go so you can just kind of wing it or you can put your pattern on whichever you prefer I know some of you prefer patterns so go ahead and put your pattern on if you need to and just and I'm just kind of guessing at the tops it doesn't it, they're carrots they're all going to be different so just a quick coat of spice pumpkin on the carrots the two side is actually kind of easier because there's not much uh tops that not much of the top showing that you have to avoid All right. All right. The tops are painted with Irish moss. So again, I'm just going to use my flat brush. I'm just going to get in there and paint the tops with Irish moss. And again, it doesn't have to be opaque. As long as it kind of looks like a carrot top, that's all that matters.
Okay, they're looking like carrots. And there we go. All right. So I'm going to take the same brush that I based them in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke the highlights across the top of these carrots with moon yellow. I'm going to do that trying to avoid the carrot tops, right? So make sure you know which are your tops. On the three, the uh, green tops are go top side, right? So I'm just going to take some moon yellow. I didn't add any water. My brush was wet, but I didn't add any water. And I'm just going to start at the outside edge and pull like that. No big deal. These aren't carrots that, you know, we're going, we're not going for realistic so much. So I'm going to turn my brush kind of sideways to get next to the carrot tops. So just however you can get your brush in there to do this. And if you want to use a smaller brush, that works too. I can get in there and just kind of use the corner of the brush a little bit. All right, so I've got those highlighted. And if you wanted, you could just do a regular old side load float highlight if you want. That might be easier for you. All right. And so I'm going to wash that brush out, and I'm going to pick up some burnt umber. And the brushes, I didn't add water, it's just wet from being washed out. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do the opposite side. I'm going to do some shading. And I don't know if you can, if you've noticed or not, but it's curved. It's not straight, okay? So try to keep that curve going. So it looks a little bit more like a carrot, right? We want it to at least resemble a carrot a little bit. All right. Last ones. Yay. be really good when you get to this last one. You'll be really good at it. So we need these to dry so that we can actually float some shading on them. So get out your handy dandy dryer and dry them just a little bit. So we're going to float shading on the dark side the burnt umber side with burnt umber and this is where we're going to um, separate them from each other and separate them from the um, tops I had to think for a minute so I'm going to go on the dark side and just do a float of burnt umber and that can clean up that edge a little bit Also want to 
float a little bit of burnt umber to separate the carrot from the top and separate the carrots from each other if they're on top of each other. So let's see. I think I'm going to make this one be on top. And I'm going to go around the little top. And then I made this one be on top. So they end up looking like dirty carrots. Right? Everybody loves a dirty carrot. And shading on the twos. Let's go right here. Just to separate them. Let's go along this bottom edge. And along this bottom edge. And then you can tuck just a little bit of burnt umber next to those um, tops. So now a number four brush, um, or number two, or number four, or whatever, around. You're going to load it with Irish moss, and then you're going to pick up some moon yellow on the tip. And so we're going to stroke on the um, carrot tops. So I'm going to start kind of on the tip, and I'm going to flatten out, and then I'm going to come back to the tip. And I'm going to do the outside little petals of the um, carrot top first. So tip, flatten, back to the tip. Tip, flatten, and these don't have to be perfect, thank goodness. And then I'm going to do that center one. Oh, I have another one over here, sorry. Forgot. So then I'm going to do the center one right on top of all those. Okay? So, a round brush loaded with Irish moss tipped in moon yellow. And let's do our next one. And this will go pretty fast. Because now you have the hang of it, right? And it doesn't have to be perfect, which is a bonus. And this is where you can kind of fix those uh, petals that are on top of the carrot a little bit. That's why I wasn't too fussy about them. But just some quick and easy little carrot tops. Could use a little bit more moon yellow in that brush. All right, almost done with one side. part of this project is complete. I kind of like these carrot tops. Even if I say so myself. I think 
those would make good palm leaves too. But that's for a whole nother project. All right, cool. Guess if I put these down here where you could see them, it would be better. Just one more little thing. The carrots themselves all have a little bit more of a highlight on them, and that's just with your little liner brush. You're just gonna come in here and kind of tap and squiggle a little highlight on the highlighted side. So just, it's kind of something I do even like when I do carrot noses on my snowmen. I just kind of like to squiggle a little brighter highlight on there. No rhyme or reason. Just, it just kind of makes them pop a little bit. All right. So once these are dry, these carrots here, you're going to go ahead and wherever I put my piece that I was working on, here it is, lost it for a minute under papers, you're going to glue these, these carrots in place, just kind of like that, all right? And then, once that's dry, you can add your wire hanger. I'm going to set this guy aside and get the finished one out. Back off a little bit. So once you have those carrots in place, then you can add your wire hanger and your um, beads, if you bought beads, and then a little bow. And uh, there you go, your project is complete well you have to varnish it and sign it and all that good stuff but there you go you have a nice um cute little spring piece that'll last you march into april so there you go thank you so much for joining me happy easter <laughs>